everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. Lily just woke up, didn't you, precious? She's teething and she's sick. It's so sad, but she's keeping a smile on her face. Yes, you are. Today we're going to be making some tomato vine soap, and you guys are gonna flip. This is like one of the coolest soaps I've ever made. I'm totally gonna have to make it again for one of the next releases in the future. And all in all, I'm just quite delighted with it. If you aren't following us on Instagram, I have one for royalty soap, so all of my soapy creations are over there. And then I have one for personal stuff, so lifestyle, fitness, you know, all the common crap that people post on Instagram. And of course, lots of pictures of you, yes. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get soap making and scuttle on into the video. I have here my bucket of melted oils. The recipe is down in the description box below. And so I'm going to pour my lye water solution into those oils. I've got a scrapey scrapey out my lye water container. And then I'll stick blend on low until everything is properly blended. Now that my soap has been completely blended up, I'm going to pour off two colors. And I'm going to be using natural colorants today. This is the first time that I will be using any of these colorants, so it's kind of exciting. The first additive I am putting in is carrot powder. Yes, dried out dehydrated carrots. Really good for your skin. Then into this back container, I have some red Brazilian clay. And into this container right here, I have some spirulina powder. If you don't know what that is, don't look it up. Guess down below, just based on the name, what spirulina powder is. Since I've never worked with any of these colorants before, I have absolutely no idea how they're going to perform. So let's blend them up and see what we think. Well, I guess it's nice to know that carrot powder looks like absolutely nothing when added to cold process soap. The Brazilian red clay doesn't really look red. It looks a little bit Mm, kind of like a coffee color. And then the spirulina powder looks exactly how I thought it would look, which is kind of a hunter green. The fragrance oil we are using today is tomato leaf coriander from Nature's Garden. This smells shockingly similar to the Burt's Bees um, tomato face soap that they used to have a really long time ago. I don't even think you can buy it anymore, but when I was a teenager and my mom was convinced that acne soap would help my acne, by the way, it didn't help at all. That's the product that she chose to buy for me and I really liked the smell of it so I was really happy when I opened this up that that's what it reminded me of. I'm going to blend this in by hand I think. And now that the fragrance oil is blended into the soap it's time to pour into our molds. We'll begin with the carrot portion of the soap. I've left this completely um, uncolored besides the powders in it, so there's no titanium dioxide, nothing to naturally whiten the soap, and honestly, I'm really digging the color. Gonna add a little bit of that Brazilian red clay into there now. I think I'm just gonna leave this a drop swirl. Gonna add a little of the spirulina. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> It just now occurred to me that I might be completely flubbing the pronunciation. Gonna add a little more here. Gotta scrapey scrapey my container. I'm just gonna shake these down. Make sure all the soap is evenly distributed throughout the loaf mold. Awesome possum. Now I am going to mix up our frosting. I have loaded my piping bag with frosting and the piping tip I am using I got off of Amazon and I'll leave it down below for you guys. I have also colored the frosting with some more of that spirulina powder. Gives it this nice natural green look. I am really, really loving this soap. I told you guys in some previous videos that I've really been on a little bit of a more natural soap looking kick. One thing I will say about this powder, um, just as a warning for any of y'all who may want to use it, it never fully dissolves into the soap. So it's a lot of really 
teeny tiny like micro pieces of the powder and then it still colors it green but there's going to be little speckles throughout your soap so if that bothers you just wanted to give you a heads up i am putting three little plops across and that's what i recommend for people piping loaves of this size if you use a loaf that's a different size um like a tall skinny one you might need to add another little frosting plop onto there. I haven't used a tall skinny mold in so long, but they're really, really useful for doing like layered designs and stuff because they're tall. Sorry about my little witchy voice I've got going on. <laughs> I'm reminding myself of the evil queen on Snow White whenever she makes the potion and undergoes the change into like the wicked witchy old woman. She looks at her hands and she's like, my hands and then she like grabs her throat and is like my voice <laughs> that's what i sound like in my own ear <laughs> i have this last little plop to put on these soaps and then we're actually not done with the soap frosting i have some more little bits i have to put on here the next bit of piping i'm going to show you guys is the tomato vine we're going to be creating so this is the spirulina powder with the soap frosting and i've added just a teensy teensy tiny bit of hunter green in there just to make it a little darker so it's pretty runny right now and i'm just gonna kind of go down the length of each individual bar it's gonna be kind of liquidy which is what i want if you've ever grown a tomato vine you know they go absolutely everywhere so instead of having sort of neat little even vines they're going to be kind of runny so that it looks it's going in all of the little cracks and crevices of each individual soap bar. The piping tip you use for something like this really doesn't matter because it's so runny anyway. Go down here and I'm going to kind of repeat the same thing for each individual bar. Now that all the vines are in place it's time to put the tomatoes on. So there were a couple different things I wanted to try for this. First I turned the little embeds that I have, these little red embeds, upside down where the flat side was facing up because I thought I might pipe the leaves on and then I painted the leaves on with some mica and rubbing alcohol and then I turned it over so that the round side was up and I decided I like that best so instead of painting each individual one and then sticking them on the soap I'm gonna stick them on the soap first because my gloves I feel would kind of mess up the painting a little bit and I am gonna place these on there kind of randomly I don't want the tomatoes to be in the exact same spot bought on every single soap because that's not accurate to tomatoes. <laughs> Each bar is going to have at least two of them though. When the tomatoes are done they're gonna look a little something like this. So for the painting I have mixed up some alpine green with a little bit of vodka. That's what I find works best and I'm pressing down once. This is an angled brush by the way and then twice again just like that so it makes a little cross sort of and i'm going to repeat this on every single tomato <laughs> all is said and done this is what the tomato vine soap looks like it has a very vegetable patch feel which I'm really excited about and I actually just really love that little mica painting on the top I think it really brings it all together and the randomness on the bars is so delightful I'm gonna wait 18 to 24 hours before I cut them and then we will be back after this quick commercial break we are back the next day to cut what I think I'm gonna call tomato vine soap. It smells so good, it smells just like a vegetable garden. Okay, very gently. I'm gonna press down on my 18 bar soap cutter from Nurture Soap. And then we'll pull one of the bars out. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Oh my gosh, that piping, I love it. You can see all the little green speckledy bits in there. 
And then down at the bottom, there's all that green speckly bits too. And then that red Brazilian clay made a lovely pink. I am obsessed. This is gonna be one that has to come back for sure. So the question of the day is, have you ever eaten a vine ripened tomato? Meaning you went outside or someone you know went outside and picked it red right off the vine. I asked one of my best friends this question not that long ago because we were talking about this soap design and she's like, I don't think I've ever had a vine ripe tomato. And I grew up a good majority of my teenagers in the country. So when she said that, I was like, Girl, what? You have been missing out. Those are like the best tomatoes on the planet. The other tomatoes that you buy at the store, they don't even come close. Like they don't even taste like the same thing in my opinion. If you'd like to vote, you can click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And I will be really interested to see all the different people all over the world who all has had a vine ripened tomato. I hope you all have enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. Maybe like the video. And hey, if you're feeling really, really adventurous today, you could click the notification bell so the soap fairy alerts you every time I post a new video. Did you like today's soap? Did you like today's soap? We did a good one. <laughs> and until next time, I hope you all have an absolutely royal day. And bye for now. You say bye for now. <laughs> and don't be wise. Who has the biggest blue eyes? <laughs> <laughs>